Welcome back, Antiquity Fam, to our academy. And today we're once again talking about SQL injections in, in detail about a blind SQL injection vulnerability. Let's jump into our lab. And this is once again provided by Portswigger. We do see a shop app, and the goal is to find a blind SQL injection with time delays and to retrieve some juicy information. So we're going to have a look at this request over here, and it's the, the first request that pops up in the application, it has a tracking ID and a session cookie. And we're going to test both those for a SQL injection vulnerability. We're going to send it to the repeater, and we know that this application is running Postgres as its SQL database. And what we can do with Postgres is we're going to use stacked queries. And those work in the following way. We are going to use a semicolon or in its encoded way, a percent three B character. Like I said, that's the semicolon to close and finish the first initial query and then start with a new one. And then new one is going to say, select the case. So we're using a case when one equals one. So that is our condition. That is always true because one is always equals one. And if that is the case, then it's true. And then do a sleep. For that, we're using pg underscore sleep. And we want to sleep for 10 seconds to make this visible if the response is taking longer or else sleep for zero seconds or don't sleep at all, basically. So with that, we would see a huge difference if the condition is true or not. And then we're going to say n minus minus to comment out the rest of the original query. And if we send this to the application, we do see that our response takes quite some time. In fact, it takes 10 seconds plus a little extra, which is the time the response takes for itself. So we found a SQL injection vulnerability with a delay over there already. So now just for testing purposes, we're going to say when one equals two, and there is no delay. So that makes sense because that condition is not true. And from here on, we can search for more juicy information. So we know that there is a table called users, and we want to know if there is a username that is a user in there with the username being called administrator, which is why we're saying when username equals administrator, and we're going to say from users as a table. So we're going to send this to the application and we see that the application is not responding quickly. So once again, this condition is true. And with that, it means that the user called administrator is actually existing. So now I want to go ahead and we want to find out about the length of the password of that user. So let's say, and length password is bigger than one. If that is true, then we wait for five seconds to make this a little shorter, to wait a little shorter, and we're going to send this to the application. And we're not getting a response within five seconds. So yes, there is a column called password, and it's longer than one character. So we're going to try 10 characters, and we could technically use burps intruder for that, but for the sake of ease, we're just going to use the repeater, we're going to say 15 characters, we're still getting a delay of five seconds, we're going to say 20 characters, and we are not getting a delay of five seconds. So that means it's not longer than 20 characters. So now we're drawing 19. And in fact, we get a delay again. So with that, we know that the password is exactly 20 characters long. And you might be wondering right now, why do we need the exact length of the password. And the reason here for is because we're going to make use of the substring query functionality. And with that, we can say end substring. And we just say, we want to inspect the password on its first position. And we only want to check one character. So that's what the two ones are standing for. And we're going to say, does that equal the character A? And we don't wait for five seconds. So no, it doesn't equal a character A. But now we're having too many characters. And we don't want to do that manually. So we're going to send it over to Intruder. 
and we're going to clear all the payload positions and only mark the character A. And once we have that, we do need a payload. So we mark the A and we head over to the payload tab in Burp Suites Intruder. And this is typically already set to the payload type called simple list. And that's exactly what we need in this particular case. We're going to select characters A to Z and the numbers zero to nine. So now we're having some characters that we're trying out. Now we need to create a resource pool. And for a time-based client SQLi, we, only, we always have to set the maximum concurrent requests to one. That is important, otherwise you could get a little fake result. And we do see the intruder running, it's 36 requests, and one of them takes a little longer. So one of them actually takes five seconds. And this is the character we wanna go for and search for. And if we go to columns up here, we say response received, we're getting another column in our intruder window. And if we sort that after its time, we see that one took significantly longer than all the others. So the first letter of our password is a six. And now we only have to do the same thing for the other 19 characters. So how are we going to do that? We could write a little script in Python or in whatever scripting language you prefer, but I'm actually going to use the intruder functionality once again. So now we're introducing another payload position with the character in the substring. So we're gonna say, we don't just wanna do the first character, but we wanna search in the first 20 because we know that the password length is 20. This is why it is important to know the length. And we're going to use the attack type cluster bomb. And you will see in a minute what this is doing. We're going to payloads. And for our first payload, we just need numbers because we know we wanna check the first, second, third, all the way up to the 20 characters that our password is long. And the step count is one. So at this point, we're having 20 requests sent to the server. And in our second payload set, we're doing the same thing as before. We're using list A to Z and numbers zero to nine. So in total, we're having a request count of 720 requests being sent to the application. And we're going to run this, and this is going to take a while, which is why I'm speeding up the process a little bit. And we're once again adding our response received column and sort them in a way that we see the requests or the responses that needed the longest time on top. And what we're going to see over here is one letter after another, we will have some results coming in where the request took a little longer. And let's fast forward that process. We're doing that, we're done, and now we can go ahead and mark all the requests where the responses took five seconds and more. And we do this by, once again, sorting off the response receive column. We go down, we have a look at all of those, but we can just say, okay, let's do this for all the 20 that we have received. We go to the filter and in the filter before that, we're actually going to color them light blue first to make it visible and to highlight them. And then in the filter, we only show the highlighted items. And now no other item is left. And then we sort after the payload one again. And now we see in our first position, we have character six sitting. In our second, it's character N. In the third, it's character V. In the fourth, it's character L and so on. And now we're just typing out the password. We're using the, the search functionality down below here because it doesn't really matter to get the password ready to log in with our administrator user. So once we have done that, once we've completed all those letters, we're going to copy that string, we're going back to the application, and we're going to try to log in as an administrator. And if we got this right, and we click on login, we see that we are logged in as an administrator and we have successfully solved the lab. All right, let's 
reiterate one more time what we've been doing. First of all, we wanted to search for a SQL injection vulnerability, and we found one in the tracking ID cookie. We were using stacked queries in the Postgres SQL language to not just query for the original query, but also for one thing, one query that we came up with. And we injected a sleep. And with that sleep, we first of all realized that the vulnerability is existing. We then went ahead and tried to search for uh, certain information with the username being set to administrator in a specific table called users. And we monitored the sleep to say, okay, this is actually existing. Then we were crawling or querying for the length by using the length functionality in that SQL query language. And after that, we're using the substring functionality to go over character after character and to extract every single character in that password field or password column for the user administrator. And we got the actual information by always monitoring the sleep which we have set to five seconds. So if the response took five seconds or longer, we knew this was a correct query. Otherwise the condition was not met and we were waiting for zero seconds or like an immediate response was given. And with that sleep or no sleep, we could actually retrieve information out of the database. And we did that to get the administrator's password. And that's it. With that, we found the juicy information. If you have any questions, let us know down below in the comment section. And yeah, give this video a like. That's really important to us. And apart from that, give, uh, well, sign up to become a follower of our channel. And other than that, I'll talk to you again soon.